Hi, so in this example we're going to be looking at the difference between arrays and vectors to store a sequence of different values. So uh, when you're working with vectors you need to have pound sign include vector because it's a vector class um, and then we're also going to be doing a couple things with string so string is in here and then the usual IO stream. Uh, so let's not worry about these functions for just a sec. Let's, let's look down in main. So in C++, the arrays are really kind of a holdover from C. So an array is a series of memory locations, and you have to give it some type. So in this case, this is type int, so that you know how large the memory locations are uh, when they're in the sequence. And then the array is a pointer then to the first memory location. And that's really it. And so when you specify an array, there's not a, a quick and easy way to resize the array. Um, the array doesn't keep track of how large it is. Um, you have to keep track of all of those things in your, your program. And if you do want to resize an array, it's a little bit out of the scope of this course, but you'd have to go and allocate memory um, actually in your, your program and then reallocate a large amount of memory and then copy your array over to that new memory location and then move your, your pointer over. So it's not, a, it's not an easy or, or clear process to do this. But let's look at how arrays are, are used because uh, one place you might use them is with embedded systems. So if you're using uh, Arduino architecture, it doesn't have the vector because it doesn't have all of the C standard library in there but it still has an array, again, because array is just kind of hold over from, from C. Um, so you may need to use arrays if you're, you're programming on something that's very memory limited um, or doesn't have the, that standard library. So you need to give it a type, and then you need to give it a valid identifier, and then you use the square brackets, and then you put the number of elements inside the square bracket. So for this first declaration, this would be an array of type int, and it would have 10 integer values. If you want to initialize it to where it's not just whatever was in that memory location, then you can initialize it like this, int, let's call this one b, it'll have 10 values, and then do equals, and then just do uh, curvy braces around it and a semicolon, and then um, that'll set all of the values to 0, 0 is the default value. If you want to set the values to something other than zero, you could do something like this. In this case, we're only specifying one value. So then the first value is going to be set to one. Uh, but the other values will not be set to one. And then if you wanted to specify, say, all the values, then you could do equals. And then you could just do a sequence of values to store in the array separated by commas. Um, if you do have a sequence of values separated by commas, you can also let the, the IDE determine how large the array is. You still need the square bracket so that it's clear that it's an array, though. But this last statement here, int e, and then the square brackets where they're empty and the equals, and then it would then set the size of the array to be equal to the number of values that you have. All right, so let's see what happens when we try to just print the array. So if we just do a C out and we had A, which was our array that we didn't initialize, so it just should have kind of garbage data, whatever was in that memory location. So when we try to print this out, we get a memory location uh, here that prints out. So this is an address. So remember, arrays really are just the pointer and the sequence of memory locations. So this is what's in that pointer. That's the first location of the array. Um, if we do, oh, it looks like I've got a typo there. Instead of vector, I should have said array. Um, and then if we do uh, Let's see, we want to print out all the values in the array. Now we want to do this over and over and over again. Um, so let's look at how to, to set up a function to do this. So we're going to use this function print underscore array. 
and then to send the array, it's just the name of the array. And then because the array doesn't know how long it is, we need to also send the size of the array. So this was size 10, so we'll do a comma 10 because 10 is the size. Now let's look up at the function print underscore array. We've got it overloaded uh, to where it'll handle both arrays and vectors, but let's just look at the array portion here. So we're going to print out uh, what's in the array and we can access uh, the first value by giving it an offset of zero. So the value that's in the square brackets is the offset. So when you have a zero offset, that means you're at the very first element. Um, and then here's a for loop to go through and you could have run this for loop uh, from zero up to size array. Size array is just catching the, the int. And in this case, I wanted to show you that printing that, that first value separately just so you could see that the zero is going in there and that that zero is the first element. Okay, let's try to print out also um, the 11th element because these are all size 10. And so we can do the, 11 el the 11th element contains, so since we start at zero, the 11th element's going to be 10. Our array needs to end at an offset of 9. So notice when we did that, we didn't get any error messages whatsoever. Um, and it just prints out the 11th element in the array. And it's just whatever's in that next memory location after the array. So it's not part of the array. But notice there's no error message. Um, there's no problem with it. Um, printing that out. So just be aware that the array just doesn't have any safety features attached to it. Okay, let's look at printing out all these different arrays and see what we get. So we printed out um, B. B was the one that we set to zero. So you can see that those are all zero. C was the one that we set the first element to one and then it initialized all the other elements to zero because there wasn't anything else in the declaration. And then this was the one where we did one through 10. So you can see the one through 10, and this is the one through 10. Notice in each case, these all have an element that we can try to print out, but doesn't actually belong to the array and doesn't cause an error. Okay, so now let's look at uh, using a vector. So the vector is a class and the vector allows you to use all the functions that come with the vector class. So it'll allow you to add things to the vector, remove things from the vector, insert things into the middle of the vector. It has its own internal pointers that we'll talk about later called iterators. Um, and the vector also keeps track of how large it is. And if you want to add elements to it, that size can increase and it'll handle all the memory location and everything for you. So my suggestion would be if you're going to program on the computer with, with, you know, Windows 10 or your, your Mac OS, I would recommend just, just use vector. Um, but if you're going to program again on the Arduino or something where you're very memory limited uh, or you don't have that full C library, uh, C++ library, then that would be when you'd want to use uh, array. So let's look at declaring a vector. So we can do an empty vector. So it would be std colon colon vector. And then it's a class that's using a template. We're going to talk about templates at the very end. So this will make a lot more sense at the very end of, of our course. But for right now, just know that the type is going to go in between a less than bracket and a greater than bracket. So this is a vector of type int, and it goes the type goes right there. And then the name goes right after the type, and then you can do your semicolon. So this would be an empty vector. If we want to do a vector of size 10, we'd do vector. Uh, the vet name of the vector and then open close parentheses and put 10 in there. If we want to do a vector of size 10 and set all the elements equal to 999, we could do 10 comma 999. If we want to do a vector and place the numbers 1 through 10 in there, then we can do the same declaration and equals, same curvy brace, close curvy brace, and then the 1 through 10 with commas separating them. And if you want to make a copy of a vector, 
then just put the name of the vector in your parentheses that you want to make a copy of. So those are kind of the different ways that you can declare a vector. So let's see what happens when we try to print these out. We're going to use print array, but we have it overloaded with vectors. So let's go and take a quick look at that. So here it is um, overloaded for vector. So on the sending end, you're descending at A, but you can see here on the receiving end, it has to be std colon colon vector, and then give it the type and then the name that you're going to call the vector here. Um, now one more thing with, with vectors and arrays. So vectors, the default is pass by value, so it makes a copy of it. With arrays, the default, and really the only way to pass them, is a pass by reference because they're truly just a, a pointer and the memory location. So this would, even though it doesn't look like it in the array, this is a pass by reference because it's really just passing a pointer. But in the vector, it's passing a copy of the instance of the class. If you wanted it to be a pass by reference, you could create that, but you'd have to go back and add that ampersand in there uh, to mean that it would pass the memory location of it, not create a copy. But the way it's set up, it's going to just create a copy, and then it's going to use this vector function, so a dot size, open close parentheses. So if size is zero, then it's empty. So it'll say, I can't print your vector, it's empty. Otherwise, it'll go through and do the same thing. So I just want to show you the syntax of looking at any individual element is exactly the same as what we did with arrays. This is the name of the vector, the square brackets, and then the offset in there. So let's scroll back down here to main and let's see what happened when we printed all these up. So there's our first vector we tried to print out and it's empty. Let's put something in that vector. So now we can use another function. This is one you'll use a lot. It's called push back. So push underscore back. So that's the name of our vector, the dot that we're going to access something out of the vector class, push underscore back, open close parentheses, and then whatever you're going to put on the end of the vector inside the parentheses. As you put these things on the end of the vector, the vector automatically then grows. Uh, to accommodate them. But you have to use a pushback if you try to just store something off the end of the vector that won't work. So then we push these squares on there and then printed it out again and we got the squares printed out. Let's look back and see what B was. B was our vector of size 10 and you can see that it initialized everything to 0 unlike with the array when we didn't give it any information. C was our vector that we said set everything equal to 999, and sure enough, it's 999 all the way down. Um, and then D was our vector that we did 1 through 10, and then E was our vector that we made a copy of D, and you can see that's so 1 through 10. Try this next statement on your IDE and see if it works. So I'm going to try just to see out the tenth element of the vector, and in code blocks, it lets me do that. Uh, and it prints out a garbage value because it's off the vector. Some of the IDEs will give you an error or a warning, and some of them won't. So try with your system and see if you get that error or warning. Um, if you do, that's, that's great, um, because it, that means that your IDE is kind of looking out for you, that you're, you're running off the end of the vector. If you don't, like with, with code blocks, just be aware then that that can always be a potential source of errors. Thanks for watching.